So what would you suggest for um, women who have um, a lot of past like sexual abuse or some sort of trauma, not just physical trauma, but something that is related to deep emotional or psychological trauma in that area of their body or just anything and how we hold it there and how do you begin to even know where to heal that? Right, right. So it is multi-layered and there are so many places sometimes I think it's hard to know where to begin. So what I usually encourage women to do is just come to their own center. There's several meditations that I have in Wild Feminine and again Wild Feminine is a book I wrote from working with thousands of women. So I felt in a way almost a responsibility to write it because I was seeing the healing response in the body with so many women and each time it taught me something and so I was having this huge resource of knowledge because each woman was teaching a piece, it was almost like a jigsaw puzzle, it was like there's a piece, there's a piece, yeah. there's a piece. How do we access this healing energy because that's what's stronger than anything else, what's stronger than any trauma or anything that's happened is the beauty of that intact creative energy so it's just getting yeah, so into yeah. that. <laughs> it is, it's like this vast resource and we just have to know how to access it. So. When I wrote Wild Feminine, a lot of that framework is there, so now it's, because it's intact, women can look at it and begin to, to resource themselves, but um, there's several meditations that I have them do, but one meditation that's been a favorite of women that have, have had trauma, and you know, a lot of these things are early imprints too, it, it can even be just um, when, when a person was yelled at as a child, and uh -huh. they begin to shut down, and a lot of times in the root, because the root is where we feel safety and security, so if we are not feeling safe and not feeling secure, we tend to close our energy field down. So two things I do, one is bring women into their pelvic bowl and begin to clear that energy. So any woman, and there's, these exercises are throughout Wild Feminine, but can I'm just going to talk about it here so women will have that resource. So you can connect into your pelvic bowl, so that means bring your awareness from your mind and kind of up here, down lower and take it to the earth and that root connection. And if you feel at the base of your bowl there's a strong connection with the earth that we sometimes forget about, so I encourage women to feel that. I have sons, so I think about lightsabers a lot. So mm -hmm. say, turn on your lightsaber and feel that energetic connection between the root and the earth. So that's the first piece is connecting in. And then I have women take a walk around their inner space and begin to sweep and clear. A lot of times trauma has left energy there and we're kind of still holding it without even realizing it. Or because we were afraid and we shut down, a lot of stagnation builds up. So as soon as you click back into that earth energy and you begin to sweep and clear, you begin to clarify your field. And women aren't even aware they can do that for themselves. So I, I love that. Neat. So you can yeah, actually I read that one and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Just to visualize that was just even connecting, just that connecting right. piece, right. reconnecting with your that part of your body. Yeah, that root connection. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually access the potential there, which first is to clear and so you can walk around and clear it. Literally some women wash it, some women sweep mm. it, some women envision themselves carrying a bundle of sage around. Um, but you're just clearing this space and you're giving your body permission to release and the body usually is ready to let go It's just that we're still holding it so you can give that body permission to clear Then I invite women to come deep into their womb space and set an intention of what they're wanting So it can be full healing in my bowl or it can be to live vibrantly in the present moment and, and release all the rest um, whatever is in your heart for that healing that you want. So setting that in your pelvic bowl, you literally go deep center and then you're there and I do this with lots of women so I just, just say go deep center and then they're usually right there in their mm -hmm. root and then you can breathe to each ovary and warm that space up. This ovary and fires are very protective so if you breathe a little bit to the right side you get some fire going, breathe a little bit to the left side get some fire going and then set that intention in the center and then walk around your bowl one more time this time blessing it and you're calling in the sacred helper energies and it can be like the wind in the trees or the sunlight or a certain color you walk around and bring that in. And that's a wonderful way to start beginning to clarify your feel and go forward into the time in which you're probably done with whatever trauma happened, you know, it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So you can start to line up your energy field to reflect the vibrance that you're in now. Do you notice a connection through your work for, um, do you notice anything within the pelvic bowl specifically in general, um, traumas that's connected to a certain place or is it always different? So say you had yeah. sexual abuse, right. or do you see a link um, with women who have fertility mm -hmm. issues and right. it being connected to past trauma a lot, yeah. or there's like a blockage? There often is. There often is like a deeper energetic layer that's happening, and the thing is, it's a little bit different for each woman, yeah. kind of what's happened. Um, a lot of times with violations, early violations, and that can play a role into fertility because women on, on some deeper level feel afraid to bring a child in because it's yeah. so unsafe for them. So again, 
with those kinds of things with violation, usually people aren't taking up their full energetic field. So while you have, so here you are in your body and you have this whole energy potential around you, usually you're just in part of it. So I encourage people to come down to their pelvic bowl and kind of see where am I present, where am I absent. Take a walk around your bowl and try to notice where you lose ground and where you kind of get spacey mm -hmm. and start taking up more space there. Really pay attention and begin to take up more of your field because to, to hold a baby and have a baby in your center, you need a full energetic potential. And the, the key piece is beginning to walk that ground in yourself and clear it out and take it take up ownership, especially when people have been violated as a young child. Someone else took their ground before they yeah. even realized they had it. So, so true. It's just going down there and again, now you're the adult for that inner child and you're going to say, this is my space and you get to take up that space. And so it's very healing to reclaim that. Aww. <laughs> That's so sweet. Um, how would you guide a woman toward healing who has actual physical growths like um, tissue problems or like endometriosis, right. cysts, um, fibroids, and do you feel like there's a mind-body connection to that as well um, mm -hmm. with them advancing in growth and how would you help somebody right. to um, heal? A lot of women feel that they're to blame of their thoughts create this. Yes, or Exactly. So first of all what I want to say is the most important thing is to love yourself no matter what. And if I could just say, you know, I, I don't think women need any more shame and that is definitely, that's number one that I see in my practice still is that modern women were still carrying so much shame yeah. and so if we can set that burden down and also you know I think everybody has their journey and they don't always get to choose their journey. So someone get some women get pregnant really easily but then they might have other challenges they have to walk their path other women their challenge is fertility and so mm -hmm. the key piece that I would say to every woman is please keep loving yourself and treating yourself kindly and we don't always know why we're having those challenges and it isn't always a perfect link I think sometimes we set it up if I just do this and this yes and this, then maybe I'll get the baby or some people it's going to be the partner mm -hmm. or the perfect job or you can substitute whatever piece is missing there and in some ways we kind of punish ourselves when we do that too because if it doesn't show up then we must be doing something wrong yeah, so it's a weakness or something's wrong with something me. I'm yeah. not doing something right or I didn't get the perfect birth or I didn't get you know and so it, it somehow we start to self-punish so again we want to do these holistic methods and we want to bring as much awareness and healing as we can but we have to be loving to ourselves still because I don't know always why, you know, women come to me with fertility challenges or with other challenges and there isn't always a logical answer to yeah. it. So I'll tell you my whole view on it is just one, I think we're being challenged because we have a lot of toxins in the environment. Mm -hmm. So one thing we have to maybe accept is that pregnancy is a little more challenging than it was and it might be because of the toxins that we're being exposed to. So some of it we have to give up the responsibility and we just, we don't always know. Um, I do think that delaying childbirth is playing a role just because we're doing more with our careers and whatnot and mm -hmm. so we're delaying having babies and we're using more with birth control again we have to just love ourselves through that and not put blame on ourselves like oh, for the choices have, that we've made yeah now. I should have done this or I should have done that you so did the best you could at the time <laughs> right you just have to be in that moment and so it's you know there are some shifts we've had a lot of shifts in fertility just in the last 50 years because of birth control women are now choosing to have less children mm -hmm. and so there's this amazing shift with creative energy but I think if we can uh, still heal the relationship between our body and begin to tap into that womb energy just for creating our lives that helps heal the split where a lot of times women would come and see me they've only given thought to their womb in relationship to not having a child or having a child and that's it, yeah, you know, very really. True. So if we can start to understand that this energy is important for creating our life, and actually if you take a meditation and you go in your center, you get some of the best advice and wisdom it's you will so get. It's so true. It's so powerful. <laughs> it is very powerful. It just, it relates to you as a creative woman, and it's from the universe. It's from, you know, it's where we bring souls in, so there's this incredible access to the universe we have there. So if we can go there and even ask, I always encourage women, whatever their challenge is, but in this case, let's talk about fertility, mm -hmm. go there and keep talking to the universe. Keep saying, I want a child. Please send a child to me. Envision yourself having a child, being a mother, bringing those things in. Do let yourself dream and love yourself along the way because you don't always know exactly how or, or what, but if you keep that dream alive and you keep talking to the universe and keep loving your body, that's the best you can do through it. In that way, you're actually strengthening your relationship with your body rather than setting it up as kind of a punishment, you know, where, oh, you didn't do it, you didn't do it well, or you didn't do it well enough. Mm -hmm. So keeping that relationship open and realizing you need that energy for your whole life, for everything you do.
That's really important. And I notice that in our new community that a lot of women are connecting with that again. They're they're figuring it out and they're really bringing in a positive presence and really supporting other women through yeah. that. And I'm like, I think Tammy will be a really, like, t yeah. you're so smart. You have a basis in some things that, you know, just your master's degree. And I think women attract to that, like, they want you to know that you have that base knowledge of a degree, right. but then you have this whole other side that's so traditional and connected. Right. I think that people are really going to relate to what you have yeah. to say and that Absolutely. you've created something really profound. That makes me think, too, when women are going through fertility processes, uh -huh. the other thing I say is because then it becomes sort of, you know, if you go through IUI or IVF or mm -hmm. these other things, sometimes it feels very external and you're yeah. waiting for the hoping that it will work. So, again, use your pelvic bowl. You know, you can go and, and connect into the earth energy. You can clear that space and then you can begin to set up a field for a baby. And one of the things I have women do is soften the uterus, walk in there. Now, of course, you know, when you're wanting something to happen, we tend to tighten up and get stressed, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> which is natural. Happen. Yeah, it's happened. So instead, really love your body during that time. Go into your womb space and soften it up, almost like you're fluffing a cloud. Kind of walk around mm -hmm. the bowl and really fluff that energy up and breathe deeply into your womb. And I encourage women to do that when they're making love. And I encourage women to do that if they go in for any kind of procedure, really soften that area up, bring blessing energy around your space. It makes it much more that baby. receptive. It does, and I think it really helps it hold. I've had the, the blessing of working with a few women before they've gone in for an IVF, and, it, and a lot of times they, they hold right away, and I think part of it is because they're really using their energy field. So you can go and create that space and really receive that baby and keep that that beauty there and then of course you're waiting for all these test results right so it can create a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. so again using a daily meditation of just I trust the universe I trust the flow I'm going to bring in the blessing energy I'm going to soften my womb space I'm going to trust the path of this baby and you know if you have embryos implanted love those embryos up just for that time you know just be with them trust their path talk to them bring loving energy around there and it can be a healing experience to do that with your body yeah, that really would connect you a lot more because there is a kind of a weird disconnect there when you have any sort of procedure done. Absolutely, and I think also in women want to protect themselves a little bit from mm -hmm. disappointment, so they protect from connecting. Yeah, there's but instead, a wall. Yeah, so I had a miscarriage after my first baby, and I had it was a very spiritual experience. I talk about it in Wild Feminine, and, mm -hmm. and actually because that energy of that spirit was more spirit than baby or body, it helped me it, write Wild Feminine, and that energy of that presence of that being is, is throughout that book, and so that's where that energy went into this whole experience of this being is there, palpable. But then I also got pregnant again after that, and I remember being afraid because, of course, I had bled and I had yeah. had a miscarriage. And so with my um, next son, it's my second son, I remember feeling afraid. But because all I would learned from women, I did this meditation and I, I really had to walk the talk because I would, you know, I'd be walking around the house and I would feel something on my... Um, you know, my underwear, mm -hmm. and it was like a little bit of lubricant or something, but I wouldn't know, is it blood? And I would yeah. immediately tense up, and so I would say, I'm going to trust the path of this baby, I'm going to trust the path of my womb, and my energy field would kind of open again, and, and I did end up having some bleeding with him, which was interesting too, so again, I had to just practice this, and it was, it was such a deep presence relationship that I experienced with my body, and then, of course, my child, by being able to do that, it was really wonderful. Yeah, so it's, that story that you shared, the way you described it, I mean, I felt like I was there. I was really, I mean, just now, I was like, don't cry. <laughs> like, you know, just, and that you pulled through that and used your tools for yeah. healing to keep that next child and process the loss of that child. Right. Well, I think, too, it's because we're a little bit disconnected from these deeper layers that mm -hmm. we aren't necessarily able to feel all the experience that's there when there's a passing. And because of my presence that I've learned for women, you know, I talk about it a little bit in the story that if I had been the woman I was earlier, I would have willed that child to stay. I would have tried, and I, I wouldn't have been able to. The, they say it's a she because I had this vision of a, mm -hmm. of, of, a, of a sort of a divine goddess. But I, you know, in my previous personality, I would have just like tried to hold it in. Yeah. And what I realized was, at some level, there was a deeper movement happening that I had to surrender to, and so I did. And and, but I stayed awake and watched what happened, and it was a very deeply spiritual experience where I saw the passing of the spirit. And um, when we attune to these deeper levels, we can see maybe the layers that are in there that are present for us, no matter what's happening. Thank you for sharing that story. That's a very intimate story.